everyone, my name is Kristen from lifeofstones.com and I wanted to make a video today to share with you my top 11 tips on how to save money on groceries. I'm a blogger at lifeofstones.com where I talk about how we are on a debt-free journey to get out of debt and pay off about $50,000 of debt. We've already gone through 40 of that. We have about 15,000 to go, so $55,000 of debt. And we're hoping to blow through the rest of that by the end of 2018. On my blog, I share lots of tips on how we save money, how we pay off debt, how we live a frugal lifestyle, and how we live on less than we make so we're able to pay off debt and save money. I wanted to start a YouTube channel for a while, but I didn't have a camera. I didn't have any editing experience and I decided it's just time to film a video, put it up there and see what happens. So this is my YouTube experiment and I thank you for watching. So on to the tips. One of the places you can cut the most easily in your budget is your grocery category. I firmly believe this. We used to spend probably seven, eight hundred dollars on food every single month for a family of four. And that's just outrageous, although to some of you it probably sounds right on par because so many people overspend in the grocery category. So this is really one place where I've been able to make some major changes in our budget and really save some cash. So I wanted to share those tips with you. Tip number one, do not go shopping when you're hungry. This is not just for groceries. There's actually been a study done that proves you will spend more money if you're shopping for anything when you're hungry. Make sure you have a meal before you go grocery shopping because I promise you, if not, every single thing is going to look appetizing to you and a lot of that's going to end up in your cart whether you need it or not. Eat a meal and then go shop. You will see a substantial difference, I promise. Tip number two, bring cash. Even if you're not using an envelope system currently, if you're not on a cash system of some sort, do not bring your credit card, do not bring your debit card, bring cash. You can only buy what you have enough money for if you don't have anything as backup. Now I know sometimes it's embarrassing if you get to the cashier and she rings you up and you're a little bit over budget to ask to put some things back. And I get it, I've done it before, it is embarrassing. One way you can combat that is just bring a calculator. Give yourself a couple extra minutes to shop because it will take a little bit longer if you're adding it up as you go. Bring a calculator and then you're able to see as you're shopping whether, you're gone, whether you've gone over budget and if so, you can put a couple items back. Only bring cash to the store. Tip number three, buy in bulk. We recently had Zaycon Fresh come into our area. If you've never heard of Zaycon, they are a meat delivery company that kind of cuts out the middleman, cuts out the grocery stores, and brings the meat right to you. You order online, and they have different events um, where you can come pick up your orders, and you literally drive up in your car up to the big truck, and they put the meat in the car for you, and you drive home. So we have placed our first order we were able to order 40 pounds of chicken breast for 99 cents a pound, which is literally half the price that I've ever seen it in stores. So I'm super excited for them to come. We get our order in I think about four weeks and I'm gonna share a link to a blog post where I have all these tips and also a link to Zaycon where you can put in your address and see if they're in your area as well. So when you buy in bulk, you're able to have a little bit more purchasing power. Yes, you have to put more money out at that time because you're buying such a large amount, but get yourself a chest freezer if you don't already have one and you can freeze that. So then you have it on hand for plenty of meal planning, plenty of weeks in advance. It really can help you save a lot of money. Next tip number four, shop the sales. This is important. I'm not very good at this. Um, I do think you need to have a little bit of extra time sometimes to shop the sales, but usually all the circulars come to your house in the mail. If you get the newspaper, you can check out all your local stores and see what they have on sale. You can use those in advance to plan out your meals for the week. And sometimes it takes a couple extra trips to different stores, but it's usually worth it. So a little bit of planning up front can have a huge payoff at the end. Tip number six, meal plan. 
This probably should have been tip number one because it's by far the most important. This single tip has saved us hundreds and hundreds just over the last couple of months. I'm not very good at meal planning um, last minute. So again, really take the time and plan a week, two weeks, sometimes even a month in advance. If we meal plan for a whole month, we're able to save even more money. What you wanna do is you wanna take inventory of whatever's in your pantry, whatever's in your freezer, and then you wanna plan your meals around that. So you don't wanna start with all brand new meals. You want to fill in those gaps with your meal planning, and that's what you're gonna get at the store. Just what you need to fill in the gaps and make only the meals that you need. And being intentional with your planning is really going to help you only get what you need to get at the store. Instead of aimlessly walking up and down the aisles and throwing things in your cart that you think you're going to make one day or that might go with the meal, because what happens is they really do end up collecting in the pantry. Just a couple weeks ago, we had a food drive at school for my children and we got rid of a whole box of things that I thought I would use one day and they just sat there and collected and eventually they'll, they'll expire if you don't use them. So take the time, plan your meals, and I promise you, you're going to notice a huge difference in your savings. Tip number seven, I think I'm off. This might be tip number six, is use grocery rebate apps. Now, this took me a little bit to get on board because for me, I'm a sucker for a good deal. And I found that what was happening is I'd look on these apps like Ibotta and Ebates and I would find things, tell myself I needed them and tell myself it was a good deal because I was going to get this money back if I purchased them. So I was really overspending and it would make me buy things that I definitely did not need just because I wanted the satisfaction of getting a rebate. I know that sounds dumb, that's just how my brain works. So what I have since done is I will do my meal planning, I'll go to the store, I'll get everything I need, and then if there's something else that I need that I wasn't able to get at Aldi because I shop at Aldi primarily, then I'll look on Ibotta and see if it has a rebate on there. I'll go somewhere else, I'll get what I need, and I'll get the rebate. So again, you wanna kinda of use Ibotta to fill in those gaps. You don't wanna plan your shopping around what deals might be on a rebate app. Be careful, because that can be a slippery slope. Tip number, I don't even know what number I'm on, so the next tip is to use coupons. Plain, good old fashioned paper coupons. I am not a good resource for couponing. Um, I even say this in the blog post, I just don't spend the time and I really don't have the patience to do couponing, but you can still save a lot of money using coupons. If you are willing to put the time in, if you have a super, super tight budget and you're not quite as tight on time, I definitely would look into using coupons. It's a bit of an art. If you just do a quick Google search or search on Pinterest, you can find a ton of bloggers, a ton of different posts and videos that can really teach you how to maximize your savings with coupons. Next tip is join warehouse clubs. Now these clubs you will pay a membership fee up front. Usually it's nominal 30 to $50 maybe for the year. And I promise you, you will get that back in maybe your first shopping trip, maybe even two. Costco is a very popular warehouse club, Sam's Club, BJ's. Personally, we have Sam's Club in our area. It's really close to our house. We don't have a Costco around here. I wish we did. You pay, you can go anytime once you pay the membership fee and everything's in bulk. So again, you usually have to put a little bit more money out front and just budget. You have to budget accordingly so that you don't walk into a warehouse club and really blow your budget because most items are going to be seven, 10, 12, $15 each, but it's really a good way to stock up. It's really a good way to take advantage of the lowest price per piece or the lowest price per ounce I'm gonna put a link in down below. If you have Sam's Club in your area and you sign up for a membership, you can actually get a $10 gift card for free when you use my link. We love Sam's Club. What I do is I pretty much have a list of the couple of items that we buy there on a regular basis. And then I just divide them up throughout the weeks. So we're not going to Sam's Club and spending $100. We'll go and we'll grab maybe two items this week, two items the next week, and just keep going as we need to refill them. 
look into membership clubs. Also, there's some online clubs like Thrive Market. Same thing, you pay a yearly membership fee. And Thrive Market really specializes in a lot of healthier foods for less. So you can look online, I have a link down below for that as well. And you can get 20% off your first three orders. And the cool thing with Thrive Market is it comes right to your house. So if you really focus on feeding your family a lot of healthier foods, definitely check them out and you can save a lot of money there. My next tip is use subscribe and save. Now this is kind of a newer feature for some for some people, they haven't quite heard of this. We've been using it for a couple months now. You'll probably recognize the name from Amazon most prominently. I know Target does a subscribe and save option. Walmart does now, and I'm sure some other places do. Um, we use it for some of our pet supplies. Our dog food we purchase at Sam's Club, but our cat food and our cat litter we order through Target. And what Target does is they give you 5% off when you sign up for subscribe and save. And then we get another 5% off because we pay for each order using our Target red card. So we save the 5% there. Plus using the red card gives us free shipping each time. You can set these up to come to your home, right to your front porch at any intervals you choose. So for example, we have one bag of cat food and two containers of cat litter come to our front porch every six weeks and we're saving a total of 10%. So if you have items that you know you're using over and over and over, especially some of these items like cat litter, cat food that's heavier, you don't feel like going to the store just for them. If you try subscribe and save, you can usually save some extra money. My next tip is ordering your groceries online. This has just recently come to my area and I'm so excited. We just got this feature at a Walmart close to us. I haven't even gotten to try it out yet because we literally just got a postcard about this a couple of days ago. But the awesome thing about ordering your groceries online is you can see your cart being totaled up as you're going through shopping. As you're choosing something, it goes to your cart and you can check and see your budget. You can see if you're doing a good job staying on budget, you can see if you're going over budget and you can see a running tally of your total. Now that is super helpful, especially if you're on a tight budget or you have a hard time sticking to your budget at a grocery store because different stores can be triggers for different people. And I know years ago, there's no way I could stick to a grocery budget. So using a tool like this where you have a total, you easily can, you can avoid the impulse items because you're thinking about it as you're going down online, as you're checking items, as you're putting them into your cart. When you're done, you can review your whole order and if there's something that you think, eh, I don't really need that, I probably shouldn't have added that to your cart, you can easily delete it and then check out. And some places even offer you a discount. Usually there's a minimum. Our Walmart has a 30% uh, excuse me, a $30 minimum order, but some places even offer you a discount when you're shopping online. So look into that too. And my very last tip is to shop at discount grocers. Now there's a whole bunch of these across the country. In our area, we only have Aldi and I love Aldi. You will hear me talk about Aldi all the time on this channel, all the time in my blog. It has literally saved us thousands just in and of itself. Now, other popular ones are Lidl. I've never been because we don't have one around here. Trader Joe's, we have one maybe about an hour away and I love to take a trip every once in a while and really stock up on some items from there. The coolest thing about Aldi is they now remove preservatives, MSG, and food artificial food dyes from their products. So even though there's some things I can get cheaper at Walmart, a couple cents cheaper, Walmart still has more junk in their food than Aldi does. That's truly what I love the most about it is I do feel like I'm feeding my children some of the things that they still love. Like for example, my daughter loves Lucky Charms. The Lucky Charms from Aldi has half the sugar of the name brand and none of the food dyes. So I feel a lot more comfortable letting her eat that. That is not exactly a healthy option, but it's a better option. So in addition to Having a little bit better options food-wise, the store is a lot smaller. There's not as many choices, so you have to really get used to this is your peanut butter options. There's crunchy peanut butter, there's natural peanut butter, and there's creamy peanut butter, and that's it. You don't have 20 different brands of peanut butter to choose from. For me, that was liberating. I would spend three hours in the grocery store reading every label of every product, and it was such a time suck for me. So Aldi, I'm in, I'm out, you bag your own groceries, 
paying cash and you literally save probably 30 to 50%. So that's all my tips I have for you today. I hope you found some of them helpful. I'm going to link everything that I mentioned today down below in the video. And then I'm also gonna link to the blog post that goes over everything we talked about with a little bit more detail. I hope you'll let me know if you use any of these tips or if you currently use any of these tips. And I am going to try this YouTube experiment. So if you liked this video, I would really appreciate if you liked it and subscribed. And if you really liked it and feel like you want to share, I would be so grateful.